Who's ready for another book haul? Hey everyone, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So what are we doing today? Today I have a book haul. <laughs> Yes, another book haul. I would say that this is because I had my parents in town and we were doing all of the touristy things in my area, like shopping and going to bookstores and kicking it around town. Um, and that's why I have all of these books, but that's just simply not the truth. The truth is I had to kill some time uh, a few days before my parents came and I decided to go to a bookstore and I picked up almost everything that called to me. So I've got a stack of that. And then, <laughs> and then my, my parents were in town and we did do all the touristy things and we did go visit bookstores and I bought some books while I was with them as well. So you are going to have to accept my slightly chaotic, all over the place, very random and impromptu book haul that I'm going to share with you right now. But I do have quite a, quite a few uh, lovely titles. A lot of them are book, booktube inspired and that's where I'm actually going to start. So the first, the first book that I, I bought, actually the first set, they're not the first books that I bought. They're the first books that I'm talking about. Um, and it has to do with March Mystery Madness that's going on right now um, uh, during March, of course. <laughs> March Mystery Madness celebrates mysteries. Um, the theme this year is two by two. And if you know, if you've been following my channel or my reading for, for just even a tiny bit, I do not gravitate towards mysteries but I, I want to change that. I want to get more into mysteries. I know that they're like a very consumable genre. They are like compulsively consumable for those who really love that genre. And, um, and I was like, maybe I'm, maybe I'm missing out. And so I decided to start with the queen of mysteries. Yes, Agatha Christie. And so I picked up uh, Agatha Christie's uh, By the Pricking of My Thumb. And this is a, I didn't even know, this, this is how little I know about the mystery genre, but apparently, I knew about Hercule Pro, uh, that, <laughs> am I saying that right? Um, I know about her, Agatha Christie's character, Hercule Pro, and Miss Marple, which is like her main detective series. Um, but this is a different detective series and it is uh, Tommy and Tuppence um, and it's one of their mysteries. They are an older couple. I actually did start reading this. It is very, very cozy. Um, actually, I wanted to link something down below and I wanted to shout out a channel that I've actually mentioned before. I mentioned her quite often because I love her channel. But Elizabeth from Bookins and Books, she talked all about what makes a cozy mystery. It was a wonderful discussion video. She has all these indicators and oh my goodness, it is so good. And so I'm going to leave that link down below and I might use her cozy mystery reading scale indicators to help rate what this is on that cozy mystery scale. Anyways, Agatha Christie, uh, if you have a good place to start with Ag Agatha Christie, please let me know in the comments below. I know a lot of you are Christie fans, and I would just really love to know, like, where where you started and, and where you got into her books. <laughs> like, that would be really helpful. But while I was at Goodwill, this book spoke to me. Also, um, this Double Sin and Other Stories, I believe these are short stories by Agatha Christie. Tell me, tell me if I'm wrong down below. And then um, the Regatta Mystery and other stories. So yeah, I'm thinking I picked up a couple of short stories co collections and that's why I started with The Pricking of My Thumb because I figured this was a full length mystery novel and that's where I wanted to start with Agatha Christie. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna move on. <laughs> Another mystery, but one that you cannot buy in stores anymore, but is also incredibly special and sweet and wonderful. And that is the October Jones, um, a lightning, the lightning pines mystery. And this is written by, uh, our, our very own, uh, writer here on booktube, AJ Dunn of AJ Dunn Reads and Writes. If you don't follow them, what are you doing with your life? AJ makes wonderful, wonderful videos. Um, they're very into thriller reads. Um, and they actually wrote this, this middle grade novel, um, several years ago, I believe. And it is, uh, written under, their other pen name, J.D. McFadden, um, and it is a middle grade mystery. So it actually ticks two boxes for the, the readathons this month, uh, March Mystery Madness and Middle Grade March. So actually I do wanna read this, hopefully before the month is over. It is very slim um, and it starts off super cute. And it says, I wondered how many hairs grew out of a person's head. 
That is such a question that a little kid would ask, um, and I love it. My next two books were a gentle encouragement from Kelly from Books I'm Not Reading. Basically, this is like an impromptu shout out video. Kelly has a wonderful channel. She loves Dickens. She just finished her mammoth with time to spare, y'all. Kelly fin finished her, her 800 plus page mammoth with time to spare, which I'm so impressed by. Um, and it was a, a Charles Dickens. And as we were, we talked quite a bit offline and she was encouraging me to uh, read some more Dickens because my Dickens history is um, a Christmas Carol and that's it. So I picked up A Tale of Two Cities, which was kind of really sweet because my dad picked up the same book and you know, I just, I like that. I don't know why that really charmed me. So me and my dad walked out of the bookstore with A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. And I think, Kelly, tell me if you actually recommended this or if you didn't, please let me know. Um, but I think you did. And it's The English Patient, which is a romance and I'm getting a lot of glare on my cover. Um, but I think it was Kelly who said that most authors, in her opinion, cannot write good romance scenes, like ro romantic intimate scenes um and uh the english patient did a really good job of of writing romance without you know messing it up with awkward intimate details so anyways the english patient which i've never read but i thought why not it looks good <laughs> um yeah okay now i have four five five non-fiction books yes five non-fiction books and a lot of these were recommended by you or or have something to do with booktube i mean can you see a theme you know so I have Machiavelli's The Prince. This was talked about on Steve Donahue's channel. Steve Donahue is our, re our resident book critic here on booktube. And he was talking about 10 nonfiction books to get you started in nonfiction reading. And The Prince was on there. And so ever since he made that video back in November, I have had my eye out for all of those 10 books. And I was keeping my eye on The Prince. And so when I stumbled across it, I was like, yes, please, I want to read it. Thank you so much. Um, oh, oh, so we're back to Elizabeth from Bookins and Books, the brilliant mind behind that mystery indicator scale, <laughs> cozy mystery indicator scale. And she read, I believe she read Cleopatra, A Life um, by Stacey Schiff. Actually, this is going around booktube. Um, it's a, it's a newish release about the life of Cleopatra and what her life may have been like. Um, and I've just heard really wonderful things about it. Now, unfortunately, the woman I bought it from said that she read it and didn't like it. Um, but I have, I have a sense that her and I have quite different tastes in our reading. Um, we were kind of comparing notes on what we like to read and I was like, no, no, I, I think I'm going to like this. Um, because I, just based off of what you've told me about your reading and what I like, this is actually more akin to my taste than to hers. So anyways, um, Cleopatra by Stacey Schiff. Uh, I've been on a Virginia Woolf kick. I know that she, Virginia Woolf has, um, volumes of her, her writings and her, her diaries that you can get. And they're like, I mean, you can get her writings in, in these big chunky volumes, but that, that in intimidates me a little bit, y'all. So I decided to kind of go with something a little bit smaller, um, shorter, rather less, less in depth and, and detailed. And it is Virginia Woolf, A Writer's Diary. And actually, as I've mentioned, I mentioned it a couple of videos ago, um, my new releases for nonfiction that I'm, I'm thinking about or that have piqued my interest in some way, I mentioned how I am trying to get into diary writing, but I know part of it is that I'm not setting the time, I'm not setting up a, a system in which I get into a good habit. And I thought maybe I would be slightly inspired by Virginia Woolf and her diary. And also I'm just curious about her approach to her diary and, and y'all, Virginia Woolf, she's just, she's just in my mind. I cannot shake her ever since I read Mrs. Dalloway, which last year in October. Um, yeah, she's just a brilliant writer and I cannot wait to dive more into her work. All right, and as I'm building my nonfiction collection, um, I picked up a book that I have read before, and this is The Narrative Life of Frederick Douglass, um, An American Slave, uh, which it's been a really long time and I really need to reread, but you know, again, I felt like this is one of those books that ought to be, that I would like to have, partly because it's a classic and partly because I just want it in my home um, nonfiction book. And then yes, this other one I have read before and I've, I've loved it and I've praised it on my channel, but I gave my copy away to my mother who gave it to my aunt. It was a whole thing. And that is Night by Eli Witzel. I never say his name right. I always call it, I know the W is pronounced as a V. Witzel? Witzel? Okay, 
So, um, but Night is a beautiful memoir about um, Eli Witzel, who was taken to a concentration camp um, during World War II as a Jew and his survival story. Um, he, he lived to tell the tale, but he does a lot of contemplating, uh, thinking about, reminiscing what makes us human um, and those moments that define our humanity. All right, so my next book is from an author that I keep hearing about from you all on, on booktube. She's pretty famous, y'all. <laughs> I haven't read her. And I just decided, I saw I saw the book and I was like, please, yeah, please, you know. Um, and that is Adam Bede by George Eliot. I know that this is kind of a, you know, a mixed place to start. Let me know where I should start with um, George Eliot if, if you all have any recommendations. I know her, her big, most famous novel is uh, Middlemarch, but I know that's also a mammoth. And I have read quite a few mammoths this year. Um, and I'm sort of trying to back away from the super long books. Um, Adam Bede is, is not, not a short one, y'all. I mean, it's like uh, 500 and a little over 500 pages, maybe closer to 600 pages. But, you know, so I bought Adam Bede to maybe introduce myself to George Eliot. So, hi, nice to meet you. I hope we like each other. The next book I have not heard about. Please let me know if you've actually, if you've read it, if you've heard about it, if you enjoyed it, all, all of the things. And it is The Red and the Black. And it was written by, let's see, Hen Marie Henry Bailey. Bay Bay it's um, and then her pen name was Stendhal. So this is, you know, it was she was wrote it under the name Stendhal, and this is what it's about. So the Red and the Black is at once a brilliant portrait of French society after the Revolution and the profound psychological study of a young man's determined struggle to cope with the opposing and often uncontrollable drives within him. So it's supposed to be like a character study and I love books that are character studies. And so I read that and I was like, what's well, written by a woman I've never heard of. I love supporting female authors, especially if they are uh, maybe slightly unknown. <laughs> um, and I was like, this sounds good. It sounds like a book I would like and I'm gonna pick it up. You know, can't go wrong with Signet Classics. Not sure I have that much trust in a publishing house, actually. Uh, the but next author, actually, I have recently been talking with a friend of mine, George, who has been, um, been very kind and sending me uh, some of his favorite authors, the books that he's really fallen in love with. And, um, and so often when this has happened before where somebody will send me books that have influenced their lives and, and I'll take it uh, and I'll kind of cherry pick from that list and I use that list to kind of drive my reading and so George kindly sent me the books that really have have influenced um his reading life and of course I was like well that's wonderful of authors I want to explore and get to know more and one of those authors was Elizabeth um uh, Isabel Allende um and this is uh Ava Luna I really love the color the color I really love the cover and I've heard really, really good things about Isabel Yende's books. Um, I have another one, Daughter of Fortune, that I haven't read, but I picked up last summer. Um, but I, th I thought while I was at the bookstore and kind of keeping my eyes open for Isabel Allende's books, she's a prolific author. She's very easy to get a hold of. But I hadn't heard of Ava Luna, and I was like, this looks, this looks beautiful. And I love the cover. And that's all you need to help me buy a book. Okay, we're gonna move on. Uh, oh, this next book was actually, uh, it popped up on Jolene's list. Uh, Jolene from Bookworm, Bookworm Adventure Girl is one of her favorite books. Um, she did this celebration for her birthday, talking about some of her favorite fiction and nonfiction books that have um, really shaped her as a reader. And one of the books was The Thorn Birds, which actually came up on another list. Anyways, it's supposed to be an epic family saga and a romance, and it's kind of stood this test of time. And so, you know, I was like, why not? And I just, I love this cover, y'all. Oh, uh, you never know when I'm gonna be in the mood for an epic romance. And this looked like it fit that bill. Moving from an epic romance to a play, actually. One that I've actually seen on television. It, it is a very famous play. And um, because of Sidney Portier's performance in it, that probably just gave it away. But it's A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry. Um, yeah, I really wanted to, to read the play um, and really dive into uh, Hansberry's work. I would just love to see uh, what, what she did on the page. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to revisit a wonderful work <laughs> and um, get to know uh, Hansberry's work a little bit more. My next book is actually a replacement for a book that I already own that is, is not in the best con condition and that I'm going to read next week, 
by uh, with Angie from Book Nymph, Book Nymph, Bookaholic. Mm, Angie, I'm so sorry about your name. Um, I'll, I'll leave it, leave it on the screen below and I'll make sure to tag her as someone that I've mentioned, but it's Zora Neil Hurston's Our Eyes Were Watching God. I have a feeling that I'm going to really love this book. Um, a lot of people that I respect absolutely adored this, uh, this novel and I'm going to, you know, I'm reading it next month. And my, my copy is like an old discarded library copy that is pretty rough looking. Um, the little edges are kind of peeling. And so I thought I'd get this one and I, what a beautiful, beautiful color. Um, that turquoise is, <laughs> that turquoise is, is my favorite. There was a couple of people that were like, Shelly, why aren't you calling it by its real name? And it's like, because the word, you know, slipped, slipped from my memory in that moment, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. Okay, going back to George and his influence over my reading life, um, he recommended Annie Prulo. Is that right how you say her name? And so I picked up Brokeback Mountain, um, a short story. Um, she's more known for her Pulitzer Prize winning novel, The Shipping News, but I thought why not start with something slim to kind of get to know an author. Is it, you know, uh, I think this is like a trend in my reading. So, you know, here we go. Thinking about Pulitzer Prize winning authors, we also have Pearl S. Buck, The Good Earth. I believe Anne, Anne with a book, it speaks about, speaks very highly of Pearl S. Buck. Um, I'll leave her channel linked down below. She is absolutely wonderful and just one of my favorite channels to watch. Um, a, a lot of people, I, I love watching a lot of people. Uh, Anne has a special place in my heart. I, I just love her channel. Anyhow, um, so Pearl S. Puck Buck is someone that I've wanted to um, to read. And actually, The Good Earth has been sitting in my free little library, not this copy, but like a really battered and sad looking copy. And I see it and every time I want to grab, like, like I want to grab it, like it's saying, take me home, read me. And I'm like, no, I don't want a falling apart copy of a book that I may love. Okay. So I have standards, y'all. My standard was to buy a book that wasn't falling apart and one that I wanted to read. And so that's what, that's where this came in. Um, yeah, I can't wait to get to this. It sounds really wonderful. And I'm really interested in Pearl S. Buck's writing. I know that she was assigned quite a bit in school, I believe. Pulitzer Prize winning author. I think I said all the things. Okay, the last two books, ha one of them is by Bernard Shaw. I've never read any Bernard Shaw. Um, this is St. Joan. I believe it's a play. Was that a play? Yes. Um, but I bought this because Bernard Shaw is a Nobel Prize laureate for his for his writing, which means that he's probably written quite a bit about humanity and thought about humanity in some way or another that is really interesting. Um, typically, I notice that Nobel Prize winning authors, you know, they, they win it for illuminating something about humanity that maybe wasn't there before in their body of work. Um, so not just one book, but typically like a whole body of work. And so I thought, okay, Bernard Shaw, I'll, I'll get to know you through this plain Saint jo this play, St. Joan, and see where we stand from there. The final book I picked up is actually for a bit of a project that I would like to, you know, pair together. Um, and the book that I bought was The Yearling by Marjorie Kinnan Rowlings. And Marjorie Kinnan Rowling, Marjorie Kinnan Rowlings had a biography written on her by Anne McCutcheon called The Life She Wished to Live. And this, this book, uh, which I already owned, was Steve Donahue's number one biography, which is his favorite genre, by the way. Um, and it was his favorite biography of 2022, 2021 rather. We're not we're not quite done with 2022 yet, um, and so I thought, wow, what a what a you know I picked this up because I trust Steve's recommendations, especially for biographies, um, really for for everything, but you know especially for biographies. And then I was like, well, I've never read The Yearling, which was a huge book when it came out, won a lot of awards, had a lot of recogni recognition, and usually biographies tend to discuss the main um, works, especially but. So biographies about writers tend to discuss the works uh, that they were most known for, maybe what influenced those works, their writing process, and so on and so forth. And so I know going into this that I will have probably have liked to have read The Yearling because likely the biography will discuss The Yearling and have spoilers in it or, um, maybe, you know, definitely shape the way that I read The Yearling if I were to read the biography first. So I picked up The Yearling so I can read this first and then read the biography and just maybe do some sort of, you know, <laughs> comparison or uh, to do it as like a bit of a project to get to know Marjorie Kinnan Rowling's a little bit better. Okay, so that was it. I'm not going to do a stack or anything like that. 
Um, have you read any of these books? Do you recommend any of these books? I would really like to know. I'm, I'm really curious um, about your thoughts on some of these. Oh gracious, things are getting loud here. That's my cue to go. So um, thank you all so much for being here and spending this time with me. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye. Thank you.